Hello everyone, welcome to Open Source Code. This is a video for a review of Linux Mint Oleana stable release. So uh, Linux Mint Oleana XFC edition and others were released on the stable version was released on 27 June. So I have already done a review of uh, the beta release. Today I am going to do a review of the stable release and what things I have faced. Well, uh, to be frank, there are as such no issues except for one which is the screen tearing problem which is specific to AMD GPUs. So if you are facing a screen tearing issue while installing or other things, uh, you can look for this video which I have uh, on my channel Linux Mint 20 Uliana screen uh, tearing issue. Just go through that if you are facing screen tearing during the installation time or after the installation. Uh, that would help you. Uh, look at the comments. There is a comment also which says uh, how you can resolve the issue by running that comment. So you can try out these things whatever helps you would be nice so let's get back to our review so first of all the GUI looks nice as usual uh, I'd like to remind you this is a review about the Linux Mint Oleana 20 stable XC version so over here most of the things are there as usual the default installation does not come with most of the tools that you would be expecting for graphical work and other things. So by default you have most of the things that you need for configuration, in software installation and other things, the settings, the LibreOffice suit is there. So you can use uh, LibreOffice. So over here we have LibreOffice which is installed and if we look at about this is 6.4.4 is almost latest. The other things in multimedia you have the celluloid video player and uh, pulse audio control, rhythm box. I have installed this Voco Screen NG which I am right now using for the screen recording purpose. The interesting thing is Voco Screen NG is now available by default in the repositories so you don't have to search it around here and there. Under internet you have Firefox web browser. Under graphics, it comes with document scanner that is a scanning utility, simple drawing utility and pics. Now if you plan to do something for image editing or vector graphics, you will have to install GIMP at least. So GIMP which is there is 2.1. So GIMP is 2.1. It has not been updated between the beta and stable release. It's the same one. Of course, this is again, I have installed it from the default repositories which are there. I've also installed Inkscape. If you are looking forward for vector graphics and other kind of things. So here Inkscape, we have 0.92. Again, this has not been updated to the latest one. But this is good enough for the time being. In accessories, you have application finder, archiving tool. If you are a graphical user, you can create your zip files, tar archives, gzip and other things from here, rename tool, calculator. Interestingly, you have this catfish file search which is integrated into your file manager, Honor file manager. So you can search for files easily through the GUI. You have document viewer for your 
PDF viewing, font settings, a small G notes for sticky notes that you can have over here. Then a default image viewer is there, menu editor, onboard keyboard is there. Redshift, you can enable this redshift. This helps you reduce the strain on your eyes by changing the color temperature of your screen. Screenshot, if you want to take a screenshot, it is also there. This uh, works by pressing the print screen. This also works. You have the task manager. If any applications are behaving funny, you can work with that. You have the default text editor, which is Excel. Well, this does provide syntax highlighting and other things for your programming languages and all. So it's quite good, but you might need to install a few other specialized editors for different work. It comes with a image writing tool, USB formatting tools. Okay, so this is an interesting tool that has been added that is a warpinator. This actually allows you to share files on the same network. Of course, if the other system is also having this. So, this is quite an interesting tool that has been provided. I still have to test it out. Okay, so, basically, you have a good collection of things just to start your system. But if you're looking forward for uh, programming and other stuff, you'll have to install a lot of stuff. The software manager provides a nice interface with which you can actually go ahead and install a lot of softwares. They are categorized in a lot of sections, accessories, fonts, games and other things. So you can get things installed from here. So just search for them and install it. So most of the things that you would require are available. So most of the things that you require, you'll find from the software manager. Of course, the default background, there are new images in this particular release. So you might want to change to some other interesting image. Of course, you can choose your own and install it. I'm just going to go with this. Of course, you might want to change to the dark themes, which is currently famous with users. So you can go to appearance and here are the different themes that are available. So if you just go for the dark aqua, you will get a nice dark theme. So there are variations of this brown, aqua, and so on. So I'll just stick to this dark theme for the time being. So as soon as I had installed this, I have already updated my system. You should do the same. So after update, let's see what we have. Let's go to the terminal. Okay, so let's start with what kernel we have. So after the update, you have 5.4.0. Then, so as a command line user, you would be expecting certain things. So, uh, one of the things that you need on the command line, you have nano text editor installed by default. You have VI, the default which is in, installed now is VI improved and it is 8.1. And there is the ed editor as usual. Interestingly, there is no Emacs installed. So if you are an Emacs fan, you'll have to install Emacs. Now let's go to the programming side. Let's start with, first of all, let's find out what version of shell we have. So 5.0.16, the shell is there. Now on the programming side, 
you have GCC and you have Python. So just like the previous release, you have Python 2, which is actually Python 2.7.18 release candidate 1, and you have Python 3, which is Python 3.2. 3.8.2 What else is there? Perl is there We have Perl version 30 Let's see if we have Java Yes, Java is there So you have Java That is quite interesting So in terms of shells you have only bash installed and uh, there is another one called as dash which is installed well what else uh, most of the things did work out of the box wi-fi did work out of the box uh, the standard network did work out of the box and uh, it seems to be quite stable it's a stable release it is stable so that's a small review about Linux Mint Juliana, the stable release. So this is a stable release. We expect to get more updates and other things in between. Keep your system updated. Use the utilities provided to have a backup, snapshot and other things on your system. And enjoy Linux Mint. Thanks for watching.